Have you ever wanted to get SQL changes in your Azure function? Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Hi folks, welcome to my channel. My name is Fani Reinders. It is a channel where we dive deep into Azure and .NET and everything in between. In today's episode, we're gonna be looking into SQL triggers within Azure Functions. It has just been released a few days ago and we're gonna get our hands dirty to show you how easy it is to actually make it happen. But before we move on, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so before. Hit that little bell icon to be notified the next time I push new content or just write a little comment down below. And I do wanna thank each and every one of you for watching my content so far. Right. So let's get back into it. Right, so the first thing that we see here is we've got a terminal that's split into two. The one is the SQL side of things and the other one is the normal PowerShell side of things. In the bottom one, we'll be using the func CLI to run our Azure functions. In the top one, we'll just make sure to execute SQL commands. I'm using the MS SQL CLI. I will link everything down below into the description. The first thing we wanna do is uh, when we have a database, uh, our current database name is awesome. It's an existing database and it, it includes a table called to do. So the first thing that we wanna do before our Azure function knows about any changes on our table, we wanna actually tell it and enable the change tracking. We do this by going alter database uh, awesome. And then we say set change tracking we're gonna turn that on, right? And then we're gonna say the change uh, the retention would be about two days. And we're gonna say auto cleanup is on. When we run that, that will enable change tracking. Now the second thing that we need to do is enable change tracking on a specific table. The way we do that is by going alter table and it's to do. And we wanna say, okay, enable change tracking. And that is it. So that is what we need to enable stuff on the SQL side of things. On the Azure function side of things, let's create a new Azure function. We do that by going func init this will create a new Azure function for us in a workspace awesome that we've just created. And once that is done, we can open up Visual Studio Code. Inside VS Code, it's a normal c -sharp project for Azure Functions using the .NET 6 target framework. Also note that what I'm about to show you only works in in-process and out-of-process does not work yet, but it's still work in progress. So the first thing that we wanna do here is we wanna be able to create a new Azure function. It's almost like a HTTP trigger, but it's a SQL trigger. So now that we have our Azure function scaffolded, we can now add the SQL trigger by adding a NuGet package. We do that by going back to the terminal and we say .NET add package, and it's called Microsoft.Azure.WebJobs.Extensions.SQL. And one thing to remember, it is a pre-release. So you have to say dash dash pre-release. That will go ahead and add the NuGet package uh, SQL extensions uh, to the Azure function. Hopping back into our Azure function in VS Code, let's create a new class. So in here, we just call it, for instance, DB Sync. And in here, we will just call it public class DB sync, and it's actually a static class. You have to go public static DB sync. And in there, we'll just have a public static run method. We'll call this run. For now, that is it that we have. And what we need to do is on top of this Azure function is declare it as a function. So it's a function name DB sync. We just also need to resolve the namespaces. And that is it. That is our dbsync function now declared as an Azure function. To make this triggerable, we need to be able to add a SQL trigger to this whole thing. And we do that by going SQL trigger. And it's 
taking in a few things, right? It's taking in a, a, a database table name. In this case, it's to do. And it's also taking in a SQL connections string, which is connection string setting. In this case, it, we'll just call this DB. Now we call that, for instance, that is the attribute. So under the attribute, we want to be able to have a type. And a type we want to expect here, once a SQL trigger is invoked, we're going to be receiving an I read only list, which is a collection of read only data. And this will be a SQL change type, right? And the SQL change type is type of to do. Now to do does not exist yet. We will go and create that class at the moment. And we'll call this changes. We just need to have some uh, usings here. And the last thing we need to also update is to create that to do class. We can do that in line, it doesn't really matter. We call this public class to do. And we'll just give it a name. So we have a prop. Uh, a prop would be a GUID that we have. And that would be, for instance, the ID. Then we also we would have a name, right? So it's string. I think it was called item. And if it's completed or not. So in this case, it is prop boolean. And it is completed. Yes or no. So now we have our to do item. I'm just going to minimize that for now. And we have our function. So now let's see how this works. So whenever we run, let's log out the changes that is now coming from SQL. To do that, we uh, can make use of for each, right? So we say for each and say, for instance, every change in changes that we'll get which is the list, the read only list of SQL changes type of to do, we can write it out. So in this case, we want to say, let's inject the logger actually. And we have a logger, our logger, we call this log, resolve that dependency, which is uh, Microsoft extensions logging, right? And then we have, uh, for each change that comes in, let's use the logger to log information. We log information and we say, for instance, this is a, um, what kind of operation is this? This is a operation. And the operation here in this case would be the change dot operation. Just wanna minimize that for more space. Uh, and then we want, also wanna see what kind of operation we have in there. Oops, I forgot the colon there. So let's see, um, let's say log, dot, log information. And now let's say for instance, change. And the change should be, this is slash RN or something for new line, I'm not sure. Then we say for instance here, let's make use of the system text serializer. I think it's JSON serialize. And we serialize that string. JSON serializer needs a system text JSON. If we want to change, we want to serialize that change. Um, let's say it is change dot item, I believe it's called. And there we go. Right, so let's do a quick recap. So the first thing that we have is this changes uh, parameter, which is a type of read only list SQL changes type of to do. That is a type that basically binds to the SQL trigger that will bind it to, do, to the to-do table and using the DB connection string setting. And then what we have is we have a collection of changes. It can either be a operation add, um, change or delete it. And we will just log out the change. Before we run this though, we need to also tell the compiler where to find the connection string. So in this case, we have DB. And the connection string should be local DB. And that should be the case. Let's say this is awesome. I think this should be 
integrate security. And lo and behold, let's run it and see what happens. Let's now start our function by going func start. And as we can see here, we have a SQL trigger database that uh, function that is found. All right, now what, I'm gonna leave that running. Let's go over to SQL land now and add some records to the database. Let's now test my SQL skills here. We go insert into to do and we have values and we go for instance, new ID. Uh, we name is for instance, let's say we want to be able to say buy cat food. And that is still false. That should work, right? And when I execute that, notice what happens here. We have the operation insert and we have our change, right? The change is now buy cat food and that is being completed false. Interesting. Now let's go ahead and update something. So in this case, I'm just gonna steal the good here. Update, update to do, set completed, set completed as one, where ID is the ID that I've passed in. That will update it, but in this case, we will get back an update function here, which is pretty cool. Now this works for a list of anything. So, and how that works underneath the covers, it actually have a polling mechanism. Heading back to the documentation, we can see here, uh, there's a SQL trigger batch size that we can set. By default, it's set at 100. There's also an interval, a polling interval, which it checks for changes. And it's basically set by one second. Then we have max changes per worker and the default is now set to a thousand. So that's basically it. Uh, I will link everything down below in uh, the description. But very important also, very, very that is very cool to, to note is that it you have the ability to change how it uh, scales. So runtime driven scaling is all about scaling out depending on the processing that happens. So the more records um, you get in SQL that's changed or the change batch size, you can now actually scale regarding to that. So you can horizontally scale out your Azure functions uh, depending on the load. That is it. How easy it is to create a SQL trigger in Azure Functions now to react to changes in SQL land. Thank you so much for watching my video. Do hit that subscribe button and let's roll with new content. Until next time folks, bye bye.